good afternoon, everyone. Before I begin, I would like to thank the BNB Trust for sponsoring my Nuffield Farming Scholarship and all the people that have supported and hosted me during the last two years. With a special thanks to Graham Atkinson, my fellow 2019 Nuffield Scholars, my colleagues at Noble Foods, and of course, I couldn't have done it without the support and encouragement of my husband, Nick. One of the main reasons for applying for a Nuffield Farming Scholarship was that I wanted to be able to push myself, take myself out of my comfort zone and broaden my knowledge on global agriculture. And I've certainly done that whilst experiencing imposter syndrome on several occasions. This experience has given me so much self-confidence and belief that I hope that I'll be able to use this in both my personal life and career moving forwards. Now on to my study. The UK egg industry is currently in a transitionary period. In 2016, pledges were made by retailers and food companies to go cage-free by 2025, which is now reshaping the way we produce eggs. What this will look like in the next five years is still relatively unknown, but what we do know is that some retailers have committed to barn egg, whilst others have committed to free range as a minimum. Due to this uncertainty, there has been mixed messages out there on what will replace the retail colony volume. The industry has continued to grow, with the latest 52 weeks showing that there has been year-on-year -year growth at retail of 9%. However, due to egg packer competition and the fight to the bottom at retail, producer margins remain under pressure. The range's latest figures show that free-range margins are at minus 43 pence per bird without finance. There is continual pressure on animal agriculture from animal welfare organisations, and these cage-free pledges highlight what influence these organisations can have on our industries. This also links into the fact that consumers are more interested in where their food comes from, but are also being more challenging and critical on how it is produced. It isn't all doom and gloom though, we are the leaders of free range egg production and a lot of people look at what we do. We have the successful British Lion Code scheme, which helped turn around the industry from the 1980s Salmonella scare. But we must not become complacent and continue to look forward. So in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to talk about two main areas. The challenges and the opportunities the UK egg industry could face in the near future and how to promote the welfare credentials of egg production to ultimately inform the end consumer. As you can see from my slide, there are many challenges and opportunities for the UK egg industry, from utilising from utilizing the white birds, rearing systems, welfare schemes, culling of day old male chicks, and so on. I'm not going to be able to cover all of these today due to there being so many. However, if you're interested in more detail, please go read my report. For me, the biggest challenge for the UK egg industry would be a beak trimming ban. Currently, all day old chicks, apart from chicks destined for organic egg production, are infrared beak treated in the hatchery. This is to reduce, feather, this is to reduce injuries that are occur as a result of feather pecking in a flock. Several countries I have visited during my travels have either banned this through legislation or through code of practice, such as Germany, Denmark and the Netherlands. Norway hasn't been beak trimming since 1974. However, this has probably largely helped due to the relatively small flocks of seven and a half thousand birds and also utilizing the white bird. It will come to the UK at some point in the near future and we need to be sure as an industry we are ready to cope with this change. A change in management techniques will have to be embraced. Knowledge sharing such as regional producer groups and learning from other markets and farmers will be crucial in, in order to ensure that our health and welfare of our birds are maintained. Enrichments and reducing, reducing stress levels are some of the key factors that will help maintain flocks with full beaks. What some people may see as a challenge, I also see this as an opportunity, and this is the cage free transitions. Depending on who you speak to, you'll get different definitions of what cage-free actually means. But in the UK, we would call this barn production. I feel that there is room for barn egg on the retail shelf, as I feel that the consumer should have a choice. One thing that did surprise me on my travels was that a cage-free egg in the US 
was more expensive to buy than a free range egg in the UK, which to me just highlights we're not valuing the premium product that we are producing. The biggest challenge we face though, is explaining to the consumers what barn egg production actually is, so that we're not in the same position as we are in now with colony egg production, where, whereby significant investment was made in only, only, eight, only eight to 10 years ago. And now you'll not be able to find this egg on a retail shelf in five years time. So this takes me on to my next subject. How do we promote the welfare credentials of what we do? One way is through consumer engagement, and there are many ways to do this, from social media, television programmes and open farms. The gap between perception versus reality is unfortunately getting wider, but we have a real opportunity to close this gap and help counteract any negative press and misconceptions. Over the years, uh, the average size of egg farms have increased, and we're now looking at an average of 32,000 birds when building a new unit, which for a consumer is a lot of laying hens. We unfortunately haven't brought the consumer along with us on this journey as we've become more efficient and our flock sizes have increased. And personally, I feel that the poultry industry has been relatively closed off, but we have to start somewhere. In my role at Noble Foods, I've taken many different types of people around our farms, including our large colony unit. And when standing from the outside, looking at six large buildings can be daunting for anyone. But once you get inside and explain the system to them, 90% of them come out and say, well, that was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. They can then make their own informed opinion. A transparency project was conducted by Wing in Germany, where they, whereby they analysed the expectations of the public before and attitudes after entering a laying shed. Interestingly, the youngest generation, so the 14 to 29 year olds, were the most critical group and the expectations versus what they saw were the widest. This age group should definitely not be ignored as these are our future consumers. Next, I will highlight some case studies showcasing some farmers and businesses that I met that are successfully engaging with their consumers. Before I carry on, I just want to say I'm not a social media expert. However, I do see the importance of it, and it certainly isn't going to go away. On average, we spend approximately two hours per day on social media, and I was fortunate enough to spend time with Sandy Brock, who is the face behind Sheepishly Me. Sandy is a sheep farmer from Ontario, Canada, and she started her YouTube channel three and a half years ago with the goal of sharing her story. In 2019, she only had in March 2019, she only had 5,000 followers, but this is now at 200,000 today. And she also has 50,000 followers on YouTube, on Instagram. This just shows her heart, the hard work is paying off. This growth is due to continued producing content and videos. Sandy was specific in the platforms that she chose as, she, as this enables her to control what other people are sharing. And, but most importantly to Sandy, context is key. Videos allow you to explain what you're doing, whereas images don't necessarily give you the whole picture. Here are some top tips from Sandy for having a successful social media channel. Have a story. Be willing to put time and effort in and post every day. Engage with your followers if they are respectful, but also listen to what they have to say. But most importantly, be yourself, be honest and do not pretend. We need to be able to give farmers the tools and the confidence to share their stories with both the media and the consumers. Therefore, support from the industry in programmes such as Just Farmers, run by Anna Jones, is crucial. Fair Oaks Farm is a large agritourism centre in, in northwest Indiana in the US. They see around 500 visitors annually, and their mission is to create a place where the consumers can make a connection between the food that they eat between the food that they eat and, and, sorry, make a connection between a farmer and the food that they eat. It opened its doors in 2004 and it now includes a dairy, crop and pig adventure, along with a hotel, restaurant and cafe, amongst many others. Each adventure is an experience and is both educational and interactive for both children and, and adults, highlighting topical areas such as climate change and the environment while showcasing modern farming practices. 
There is no physical interaction between the animals and visitors, so this allows high biosecurity standards to be maintained and staff are always on hand to answer any questions you may have. I was lucky enough to spend time with the co-founders, Sue and Mike McCloskey. And one thing that stuck with me was when Sue said, you have to educate through entertainment, keep things simple, not too technical. If we are wanting consumers to trust and eat what we are producing, we need to be open and show them what we do. On a smaller scale, many people will be familiar with Open Farm Sunday in the UK, but this tends to be less common in the bulk poultry industry due to concerns over biosecurity. However, one way to get around this is through viewing windows. James and Angela McLean in the borders of Scotland when building their organic unit decided to include a viewing gallery and contemplation room you can see in my pictures here. They wanted an opportunity to open their doors in a safe and controlled way whilst, whilst, helping, main, sorry, whilst helping answer any misconceptions about organic farming. Anyone can visit them to arrange a visit, whether that be school children, community groups, or even the locals. The Kipster system in the Netherlands takes this one step further and claims to be the most animal and environmentally friendly poultry farm in the world. Upon entering the visitor centre, there are several infographics talking about sustainable egg production. The farm is open to the public all year round and entry is free. The viewing area allows you to see the birds in the winter garden area and you can also watch the eggs being graded and packed. The design of the building is also unique and once again there's no physical interaction between the animals and the visitors, therefore allowing for high biosecurity standards to be maintained. By having these facilities it starts the conversation and if people are interested they will go to learn and visit more, go to visit and learn more. So in summary, we have some of the best farm standards globally, but we must not become complacent and constantly look forward as to what our challenges and opportunities are and question ourselves, how can we make this better? Barn eggs do have a place on the retail shelf as I feel that the consumers should have a choice. Producer margins need to improve if we want to continue to have a successful and sustainable egg industry in the future, requiring joint support from retailers, egg packers, and producers. Consumer engagement is going to be important for the egg industry to help counteract any negative press and misconceptions, and there are many ways to do this. We all have our part to play, and it's vital farmers are given the tools to share their story with confidence. Consumers want to connect with people that are producing their food. In conclusion, we have many challenges and opportunities that are facing the UK egg industry. We have demonstrated the past the ability to adapt and innovate. It's now time we open our doors so that we can control the narrative. We have a good story to tell. Thank you.